Flight 07 ready to go. 820, departing 34 glider, Joe Williams. Here we go. Welcome back, pilots. We've got another wave day, and I'm flying out of Williams Glider Port in Northern California. There are no clouds to mark the lift today, so we'll be relying on SkySight to show us where to find it. Let's take a look at the wave forecast. The wind is from the northeast, and we'll be flying in the lee of the Mendocino range. Red shows where the lift will be, and blue shows where the sink will be. It takes a long tow to get to the mountains west of Williams. It's about 28 miles, or 45 kilometers. We arrive at Goat Mountain, which is a reliable wave generator. However, I'm going to wait until we're definitely in the wave before I release. It's only a 21 to 1 glide back to Williams, but the computer hasn't calculated the wind yet, and I know it's strong. I may not make it back to Williams if I don't find lift. I'll know I'm in lift when our climb rate increases above what the tow plane can normally produce. There it is. Lotus 7 up to, thanks. The beeping you hear is the Vario. The faster it beeps and the higher the pitch, the faster I'm climbing. It might seem annoying, but it's music to a glider pilot's ears. Now we're getting into the good stuff. Look at that altimeter wind up. My average climb rate over the last 30 seconds is 17.2 knots. I've never seen a number that high on my Vario. Let me know in the comments what the highest climb rate you've ever seen is. Elevator going up. So far, SkySight has predicted the location of the wave pretty accurately. This gives me confidence that I'll be able to rely on it for the rest of the flight. I'm going to fly crosswind to the northwest along this wave bar. Because of the layout of the mountains, the wave bar is not perfectly perpendicular to the wind. There's a headwind component that I'm going to have to fight in this direction, which will make it slow going until I turn around. I cruise along this wave bar, not gaining or losing much altitude, until I get to the spot where I know I'm going to need to make an upwind jump. The wave bar I'm currently on will eventually hit a dead end, but I see that the bar upwind is going to be stronger. So I'm planning to make my upwind jump here, where SkySight shows the sink will be a little bit weaker. At first the sink isn't too bad, and I keep my airspeed moderate. But then I start getting into it, and I speed up. But it isn't long until I'm out of it, and back into the lift again. I lost about 4,000 feet on that transition. Now that I'm established on the upwind wave bar, I cruise climb in a straight line. I figure this wave bar is long enough to get me to 17,000 feet without having to waste time doing any zigzags. Now I've got another upwind transition coming up. Again, I choose an area where there will be less sink and less altitude loss. Despite my clever plan, the wave bar ends early and I find myself in sink. I'm thinking I must have gone too far west, so I veer back to the east to get out of the sink. This works and I manage to get into some neutral air, but now I have to find the lift. I'm starting to doubt SkySight's forecast now. So I start doing zigzags to try to locate the lift. I finally reconnect and begin another cruise climb. The wave bar I'm on now is pretty short, and soon I'm going to have to make a big decision. 
I can make a jump upwind to a weak wave bar, or I can make a long jump crosswind to a strong wave bar. If I jump upwind and don't find lift, it'll be relatively easy to go back downwind to where I am now. If I make the long crosswind jump, I'll lose less altitude per minute, but because it's such a long distance, I'll still lose a lot of altitude. And if I don't find the lift there, it'll be a long way back. I decide to play it safe and make the upwind jump. It probably would have been fine if I had made the crosswind jump, but this is my first time flying wave in this area, so I'm taking it easy. I make the upwind jump and lose about 5,000 feet. I find the lift again, but this time it's weak as expected. I do a few zigzags to get back my altitude and continue to the northwest. I can see on SkySight that the wave north of here is going to be weaker and I still want to have some time in the day to explore to the south. So I figure now's a good time to turn around. Watch what happens when I turn around. It looks like I turn left, downwind, but I didn't. I turned to the right, into the wind, but I reduced my crab angle and allowed myself to be blown downwind in hopes of finding a better line of lift. This didn't really work out, but soon I find an isolated area of decent lift and I do a few zigzags to get back some altitude. Now that I'm headed southeast, I have a tailwind and my ground speed is way up. It took two hours and 45 minutes to go from my release point to my turnaround point, but it's only gonna take a little over an hour to get back. If you watched my last video where I was flying in wave, you might remember that my feet were frozen because my electric boot warmers weren't working. On this flight, I'm using these simple chemical toe warmers. I can't say they kept my feet exactly warm, but at least my toes were not frozen, and they did last on this seven and a half hour flight. They're simple, cheap, and reliable, and for the cost of those electric boot warmers, I probably could have bought a 10 year supply. I arrived back at Goat Mountain, where I first got off tow. The lift is still good here, but it's not quite as strong as it was when I initially climbed out, because the stronger stuff is down lower. Now I'm going to make a downwind jump to the secondary wave off of Goat Mountain. I turn downwind toward Clear Lake and I lose less than a thousand feet in this short transition. When I reach the downwind wave bar, I turn crosswind, but I still have so much altitude that I don't need to stay here for very long. I turn downwind again and head for the low hills around Sonoma. This is gonna be a longer downwind jump because I'm actually crossing two wave bars, one of which should be very weak. I cover the distance quickly with the tailwind, but when I get to where the next wave bar should be, it's not there. And here's where I make a huge mistake. Because I'm not finding the lift I expected, I decide to continue downwind a bit more to see if I can find it. But I don't find it, and now I'm in the sink behind the wave bar. I'm rapidly losing altitude, and now I'm going to be forced to push slowly upwind to get out of the sink. These low hills upwind of me should be producing something. I've just got to have faith that it's going to be there. Finally, I get into some weak lift and turn crosswind to stay in it. Suddenly, I spot a faint lenticular cloud in the lee of Mount St. Helena. This is a sure sign that the wave is working there, and I can expect to find better lift. As I approach Mount St. Helena, the lift gets stronger and stronger. Things are looking up, but it's a long way back up wind to Williams, so I'm gonna need to get as much altitude as I can here.
eventually top out at 17.5 and begin the push up wind. My computer shows I only need 14 to 1 to make it back to Williams. Can I make that going into a 42 knot headwind? Let's find out. Williams is 45 miles directly upwind. There's a weak looking wave bar on the way, but I'm not sure it's going to be working. As I begin my final glide back to Williams, I'm watching my glide computer. The number on the left means I need a 14 to 1 glide in order to make it there. The number on the right means I'm only making 9 to 1 right now. My glider is capable of making 48 to 1, but with this strong headwind, the glide performance is severely degraded. It's not looking like I'm going to make it. I do have some landing options behind me, so if I'm not going to make it, I'm going to have to retreat downwind. I'm almost to where that faint wave bar is supposed to be. Is it going to work? Here's something. There's some weak lift here, but I push up wind to see if it'll get better. I'm finally climbing again. This is going to be my ticket home. Now that I know this wave bar is working, I figure why not fly crosswind all the way back to the secondary wave behind Goat Mountain. If it doesn't work, I can easily come back here and gain the altitude I need to get to Williams. Turns out the lift is even better over here. I easily make it back to the wave behind Goat Mountain, and now it's just a matter of gaining the altitude I need to get home. Once again, my camera overheated at the end of the flight, but I'm working on a solution for that for next time. Here's Rami in Tango Golf coming in for a landing at Williams. Thanks for watching. See you next time.